I'm David Toman, author of NootropicsExpert.com, and in this video I'm going to share with you what I know about rhodiola rosea as a nootropic, what it is, why we use it, the science behind it, dosage, and side effects. Now, rhodiola rosea has been used for several thousand years in traditional medicine. It grows in primarily dry, sandy ground at high altitudes in the Arctic areas of Europe and Asia. The plant is 12 to 30 inches high and produces yellow blossoms. The Greek physician Dioscorides first recorded the medicinal applications of Rhodia Riza in 77 BCE in De Materia Medica. This ancient herbal adaptogen has remarkable antidepressant and anti-anxiety qualities and has been shown to be as good as many prescription pharmaceuticals in treating depression and anxiety. In total, rhodiola rosea contains 140 compounds in the root and rhizome. These critical components include rosevin, rosarian, and rosin, collectively known as rosevins. Certain chemicals must be present for rhodiola rosea to work, and these include rosevin, rosarin, rosin, solidricide, and tyrosol. Now the first three of these compounds are found only in rhodiola rosea. It takes a synergistic combination of these chemicals for this herb to be effective. To ensure the supplement you choose works, and contains pure rhodiola rosea, it needs to be standardized to contain at least 3% rosevins and 1% solidricide. Now, this ratio is found in the natural root, and I'll be talking more about how to select the right rhodiola supplement uh, later on in this video. Studies on organs, tissues, cells, and enzymes show that rhodiola rosea extracts exhibit adaptogenic effects that are neuroprotective, are cardioprotective, anti-fatigue, antidepressive, anxiolytic, nootropic, and it has life extension qualities. Rhodiola rosea is known as an adaptogen, which means that it helps your body adapt to stress, both mental and physical. Well first, rhodiola rosea enhances mood. Reports from the nootropics community and from clinical trials show that rhodiola rosea encourages a balanced mood. One double-blind, placebo-controlled trial worked with male and female subjects that were aged 18 to 70 years, and all were diagnosed with mild to moderate depression. One group received two 340 milligram tablets of rhodiola rosea extract, also called SHR5, daily. A second group received a double the dose that the first group received per day and the third group received a placebo every day. The efficacy of SHR5 extract for depression complaints was assessed on the first day and again on day 45 of the trial. The research team reported that groups A and B saw significant improvements in depression, insomnia, emotions, and overall quality of life. The team concluded that rhodiola rosea extract is a potent antidepressant qualities in those with mild to moderate depression. When administered in doses of either 340 or 680 milligrams per day over six weeks. Now the second way, rhodiola rosea improves mental performance under stress. Mental fatigue can cause brain fog and make it hard to focus. It can affect your performance at school and on the job. Rhodiola rosea stimulates your nervous system to fight fatigue that stifles mental clarity. And studies show it even saves injured neurons. And it encourages the growth and development of brain cells. One animal study in China explored the effects of rhodiola rosea on the number of neurons in the hippocampus of rats 
with depression induced by chronic stress. The study has a direct correlation on how rhodiola rosea works in the human brain and its value as a nootropic. In this study, 50 rats were divided into five groups. There was normal control, untreated, ne negative control, positive control, and the rhodiola rosea treated group. The research team found that the number of neurons in the hippocampus in the rhodiola rosea treated group increased and recovered to normal levels. The study concluded that rhodiola rosea promotes the proliferation and differentiation of neuron stem cells in the hippocampus and may play a role in saving injured neurons of the hippocampus. Rhodiola rosea undoes damage to your brain caused by chronic stress. It helps keep it healthy, and it even improves your body and brain's response to stress. Rhodiola rosea relieves stress by balancing your body's stress response system and helps your body return to a relaxed state by influencing key brain chemicals like serotonin, norepinephrine, and beta endorphins. Rhodiola rosea can help prevent and repair damage caused by C-reactive protein and free radicals. Rhodiola rosea even provides pr protection and regeneration of neurons during periods of stress. It, and it promotes the synthesis and the resynthesis of ATP in brain cells, the main fuel source for the mitochondria in your cells. Now, any kind of fatigue you experience, regardless of the source, rhodiola rosea is like your magic bullet. Mood, energy, stamina, and concentration can all increase with a dose of this herb. Now, many neurohackers even report improved libido and sexual performance when using rhodiola rosea. If you get an effective dose of real standardized rhodiola rosea extract, you should experience an effect. The time required to begin feeling the effects of rhodiola rosea depends on your genetics, mental and physical condition, environment, behavior, and lifestyle. Now, some neurohackers report feeling its effects in just a few days, while others require as much as three weeks. Clinical studies show that most people experience the full benefit of rhodiola rosea in 30 to 40 days. Now, if you don't experience a change, Within, in, within 40 days, rhodiola rosea may not be effective for you. Now, many report that rhodiola rosea provides a pronounced anti-anxiety effect. Depression lifts and overall quality of life improves. Rhodiola rosea should give you an energy lift. It could improve your mood, focus, level of concentration, and alertness. Well, I've got plenty more uh, research and clinical studies on rhodiola rosea over on nootropicsexpert.com. Just go to nootropicsexpert.com and search for rhodiola or click on the link below this video. I've got a detailed study on how rhodiola rosea works as a nootropic. And I've got another clinical study on rhodiola rosea as an antidepressant. The recommended dose of rhodiola rosea is 150 to 200 milligrams a day. Look for an extract that's been standardized to contain rosevins and salidricides in a 3 to 1 ratio. This mimics the ratio of these compounds in a nat that naturally occur in the rhodiola, rhodiola rosea root. No additional benefit seems to come from taking more than 1,000 milligrams a day. Rhodiola rosea is a natural adaptogen and herb that has been successfully used for thousands of years. It's considered non-toxic and safe, and very few side effects have been reported. Considerably higher than the recommended dose could result in dry mouth, nausea, upset stomach, headache, insomnia, and weight loss. Now, since rhodiola rosea acts as a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, or MAOI, you should not use it if you're taking MAOI meds. 
MAOIs are a type of antidepressant drug used to treat bipolar disorder, panic disorder, social anxiety disorder, and PTSD. MAOI meds influence serotonin levels in your brain. So taking MAOIs in combination with rhodiola brazea has the potential to cause serotonin syndrome. Rhodiola rosea is available as a powder, capsules, tablets, and as a tea. Active ingredients in rhodiola rosea include rosevins and salidrosides. Make sure you look for the percentage of the active ingredients listed on the bottle or package. Ideally, you're looking for a 3 to 1 ratio of rosevins and salidrosides. This mimics the ratio of these compounds naturally occurring in the rhodiola rosea root. Now this is where it gets tricky, and probably the reason why some forum threads and user reviews report no effect from using rhodiola. In the late 1980s, demand for rhodiola rosea-based phytomedicines dramatically increased. Wild-grown raw material was over-harvested, resulting in a steady decline in the quality and effectiveness of rhodiola rosea. Studies revealed that other species of the genus rhodiola were being substituted for rhodiola rosea. While some of these mixed batches were highly variable in quality, others had no pharmacological or nootropic effect at all. So do your best to find out where the supplement maker got their raw rhodiola rosea. Hostile environments like Siberia seem to produce higher quality of rhodiola. The active ingredients and for, with the most nootropic benefit include rosevins, rosaridin, rosarin, rosin, salidrosite, and tyrosol. Now the first three are collectively referred to as rosevins. And the other big one is salidrosite, which has several iterations. Avoid supplements that list other ingredients on the label and look for certified organic to ensure the root used to make your rhodiola rosea supplement is free of heavy metals, pesticides, and herbicides. So my nootropics expert recommendation for rhodiola rosea extract is 150 to 200 milligrams per day. And that's my report on rhodiola rosea. If you want to see links to the studies I talked about, go to nootropicsexpert.com and search for rhodiola rosea. Or click on the link below this video. There you'll find a full transcript of this video. And you'll find dozens of articles on all the well-known nootropics on Nootropics Expert. If you have any questions or you want to share your experience using rhodiola rosea, please use the comment section at the bottom of the post over on Nootropics Expert. I respond to comments and questions at Nootropics Expert usually the same day. And if you want to see more videos on all the best nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you leave. I'll be putting up new videos on nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.